What's going on guys? Chaos here, bringing you guys another video. Today I'm bringing you guys a Chaos Coaching, and I know it's been a minute since I've done even one of those videos, but it's also been a little bit since I've done a video. It's been about a week. As you guys know, it's becoming the end of the year, and I've been going to vacations, I've been doing business trips, a lot of things in the works, guys, a lot of good things. A lot of good things that's gonna help you guys in Madden 20. Hope you guys are still rocking with me, so if, if you guys, are, over the next couple weeks, if I'm a little bit less consistent than I usually am, just bear with me, I'm gonna continue to try to knock out content for you guys. If you guys don't mind taking a second, it really, really, really helps me out if you guys would hit the like button for me. You guys have been doing such a good job of that, and I really appreciate it. If you guys are new, make sure you guys also hit the sub button. And if you guys are the best of the best, make sure you guys hit that notification button and make sure you never miss a video. But finally, without further ado, if you guys don't mind and let me sell out for just a second, I'm going to point you guys over to my website. If you guys don't follow this site already, there's an email sign-up page on this link. It's hotrock.tips. I hope you guys are doing that because you guys need to be able to make sure you guys are getting the news that you guys need. Also, if you guys don't already, make sure you guys follow my Twitter. Excuse me, not my Twitter, but mine and Throne's Twitter. As you guys, as I told you guys before, we are partnering up. He's became one of my best friends of the community. We're running this site. It's Hot Route. It's at Hot Route Tips. Both of those will be in the description below. But make sure you guys are checking out this site. I hope you guys like the logo. These are our intro video here. We have our YouTubes. And at the bottom, you guys see we're releasing July first 2019 guys i'm telling you it's not just going to be our ebooks it's not going to be other pros ebooks we will have those but i'm telling you you guys should be excited about the community we created we have a great idea for it i think you guys are really going to like it i can't announce it just yet but just be on the lookout for it it's going to be awesome and i hope you guys are ready for this website and make sure you guys are following both the site and the twitter page but without further ado let's jump into this chaos coaching all right boys so any of you guys who haven't been a part of a chaos coaching before you guys are going to see, I'm not going to make very many cuts. It's going to be very minimal. I'm just going to try to walk through everything that I'm doing, tell you guys exactly why I do what I do, and try to give you guys advice on where you guys can implement those things into your games, stuff of that matter. So we got the ball. Uh, they have the ball first. So anyone that doesn't know, make sure you guys sky kick. If you guys are doing kickoff, sky kick. Pretty much if you have a good kicker, we'll send it, if not all the way out of the end zone, pretty close to it. So it's the best thing you can do right now for kickoffs. I'm on defense first, so what you got to do is just make sure you do your subs. If you guys aren't using strong safeties as a linebacker, you really need to start doing so. Simply because it's it's um, it's um faster. You have faster players there and just better players all around. So I'm going to put, I'm gonna put Ed Reed here. Jamal Adams up top. John T. Just kind of moving my guys around. I do want... Yeah, if you guys ever need more time to make your subs, pause the game. It gives you 15 extra seconds. And uh, I'm not using my team. I'm using a different team this time. So I'm not quite used to my subs yet. Usually I kind of have them down pat where I can just kind of roll right through them. And when you do that, you go, you, you'll go, you get used to it. But for now, I, I'm not. So I'm going to be doing it rather slowly. But I'm putting my corners at safety because I like to man people up and I don't want them to get burnt. He's in a run set, so I'm going to man people up, and it's going to help them play the run. I have videos on that as well, so make sure you guys check that out. I'm going to also have music in the background. It's a long video. Not You guys don't need to hear my ugly, annoying voice all the time, just by itself, that is, so try to give you guys that. So you guys can see, I'm manning up everybody, trying to stop the run, and he's not going to be able to tell it on me. He's just really not. It doesn't really make too much of a difference, just because... When you have guys that you're fast, that you're manning up, they're not really going to get beat that much when they have tight ends on the field. So that's why I may want to man people up, and then they're just going to jump right into the run fits. He's still adamant on running, so I'm going to continue to man people up. Even if he doesn't run, it's going to do a good job against the pass. And I accidentally left Shazier in, which is why I didn't get to that. That's my fault. I shouldn't have given that up, but I, I guess I forgot to put my safety as a linebacker, which is stupid. Put Mel Blunt here, Derwin James, Jamal Adams, Sean Taylor. Yeah, right. yeah. Now we're now we're in better shape. But that was stupid by me. Like I said, I literally am walking you guys through putting in safety linebacker, and I literally don't do it. <laughs> Pretty funny. But he's a bunch strong. Something you need to know to bunch strong. If you come out in Tampa too, which is what I'm in, that right side ISO receiver will ISO so it'll make your cloud man up when that happens 
your cloud basically leaves its zone and anything that goes over there will will kind of kill you so you just got to make sure to either play hard flats or do something else with them just don't keep the cloud flat this game a touchdown no i didn't oh i just made it with d lineman i'm not playing great right now guys just give me a second to warm up usually it takes a second but really honestly what i always tell people is the first possession is for learning what they're going to do learning their tendencies and trying to Try and just pick up on what they want to do, and then later in the game you can take advantage of that stuff. Now I know the guy really wants to run the ball, and if he and if he does pass, he's really gonna go to some stock stuff. It doesn't like it doesn't matter to me what they're doing. I just need to see what it is that they do. It doesn't make a difference to me as long as I know what they're gonna do. I should be okay. Now in Mutt, I have the ability to see previous play. I don't always have that when I'm playing in my like uh competitive modes but you guys should take advantage of the previous play just knowing what they're doing on every given play so i saw he was in cover two last play so just take advantage of that stuff you can't usually tell when it's a run play but you can tell right there and he's called cover two twice in a row so now i'm going to take advantage of that and i'm going to go to my favorite cover two play which is x spot you should have plays that you like to do against different coverages and different adjustments just knowing with knowing what your opponent's doing and then being able to do stuff to counter that so, send my out route right there and pick up my free first down. So, since I knew he was in cover two, I knew if he played cloud flats, I would have my out route. If he played hard flats, I would have my corner route. So, just take whichever the one the defense gives me. If he plans on staying in that cover two, he's really going to get picked apart. Just going back to my crosser. And now, when you guys don't have the, the freedom of free play, like previous play, you should be watching to see what he's in. So I was able to see he was in cover two right there, even without knowing his previous play. Just because I'm seeing what his covered shell is. And people can hide it too. So if I come out in cover two and I turn it into a cover four, I'm really in cover four. You know what I mean? So that type of stuff is stuff you need to be looking for every given play. And picking up on that will help you get better and better as we go. Now he mixed it up right there. He came out of his cover two and went to his cover three match. I happen to have a perfect play to stop to combat that. And it worked out for me. Now, he's played cover two a lot. So since he's in cover two a lot, I'm going to go to a play that I think could possibly beat him deep with that outside fade, as you guys can see, because he's pressed inside. Now, I don't know if it'll work or not, but we can try to figure it out. Now, he wasn't in cover two that time, so it didn't work. But that's just something I was doing based off his previous play calls. Just throw the ball away. You should always throw the ball away if you don't have anything open. Never need to force anything in. If you try to force stuff, bad things happen especially when you're moving the ball as well as I am I'm not having really much trouble from them so when that's the case I can just throw the ball away get them on the next down so no need to force anything no biggie now I'm not going to rely on the outside fade here because it, last time he wasn't in cover two but I will have it again just in case he happens to be in cover two and he wasn't and good defense now I didn't rely on the outside fade the first play I kind of my only read was that outside fade which is silly to put all my eggs in one basket, really. And that cost me a down when I had to throw the ball away. But right there, I had other reads, and he just was able to get a quick shed on me. So, not the end of the world. We'll go back to it. So, now I know he's he's not really playing cover three. I mean, cover two very much anymore. Gunslinger's killer, man. I had a wide open pass, but it is what it is. Like I was saying, he's kind of off the cover two. Looks like he's going to cover three now as his main. That's fine by me. I just need to make sure I'm mixing up my plays and have routes out there that can beat both. Right there, that crosser was definitely going to be both, and it was going to be open, but we ended up hitting our lineman. Not going to, not going to fret on that. Okay, guys. So going back to what we, what he was doing before, just running the ball a lot, just trying to man people up and take it away. If I man people up, he won't be able to run on me successfully. As you guys, you guys can see, he's he's not having much success. Three rushes, four yards. Nothing he's going to be able to do in trying to run the ball. He's going to have to pass for sure. And we're gonna we're gonna try to prevent him from being able to do that. Split close. I'm thinking H back wheel. Honestly, when I play someone that I don't think is like an elite player or someone that's like super super good, whenever they come out and split close, I'm thinking to myself H back wheel. That's pretty much my first go to. The second one would be uh, Pat's uh, Pat's post or whatever out of that. So as you can see, he's back in the split close strong. I'm gonna make sure to put a hard flat right there. Doing that allows me to prevent my match, and if he puts someone over there, he shouldn't have anything open because I'll have my flat there that time. I was able to pick up yards there. I'm not sure how that got underneath my, my bird hook, to be honest, but that's probably just a bad lurk by me. 
gonna try to run the ball here most likely, and I'm not gonna not gonna allow it. Oh, he goes to the pass. Oh, he's got a laser. I thought I manned that guy up. Oh my gosh, bad mistake by me. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened right there. I manned a lot of people up on the play, and when he sent that corner route out, there was a ton of congestion. And it looked like there was guys in his area. So I'm like, all right, I probably made him up. So I'm not even going to run back there. I'm just lurking low on the drag. It's a fourth and one. So I'm thinking to myself, there's no way he's going to try to like go deep. He's going to be looking looking low. And me being stupid from before, I always tell you guys something that you guys need to realize. When people go to certain formations and run a certain play and they have success with it, they're going to go back to it. Now, he, always, he ran that corner route play the last drive, had success with it. Maybe he wouldn't have had success if I didn't have Ryan Chazier in and I had Jamal Adams. I probably would have been able to get back to it. But nevertheless, he had success with it. So he's probably going to go back to it. And that's exactly what he did. And I didn't pick up on it. And he gets a touchdown because of it. Now, I was super aggressive. Maybe he didn't get a touchdown if I didn't get so aggressive. But he probably would have had a dot because I wasn't expecting it. And that's a mistake by me. And I can't allow that to happen. So just, just noting that that happened and not allowing it to happen the rest of the game, I should be okay. So... He's got a little like block shit defense that looks going on over there. You, you can see this guy's fighting really hard on my non tight end side, but it's not affecting me too much. But just something that I'm noting that he's definitely sending something at me that's a little bit affecting me. Now he's been in this cover three match every time he's done this press without moving this guy back. So I'm going to try to see if I can bomb him right here, see if I can do it. I was able to, but he did a good job lurking at himself. But that's why, like I said, I'm, I'm over the putting all my eggs in one basket thing have to have other reads in the play that cross is a good read so now if he wasn't lurking on my on my wheel i would have had a touchdown since he was lurking on the wheel i had the crosser so just don't always just go into a play thinking all right i have one read and like just zone in on it because that's gonna that's how you throw picks that's how you take sacks and it's just how you make mistakes in general and you can end drives and you don't want to do that so something you should note right there the guys are exhausted, it looks like, because everyone's out of the game. <laughs> I have freaking Gronkowski back there. Come on. Something I haven't been doing is scrolling back and forth. If you guys are ever tired, now if I do this the rest of the video, I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me do this, but if you guys are ever tired, just go into the play screen, go back and forth, and you can see... Vernon Davis has changed throughout the throughout the thing, and if there if you need him really really like back with energy, you can always call a timeout. But throwing back and forth like that can get some of the energy back. If they're like in yellow, maybe you can get them back to like a green. If they're in an orange, you can get them back to a yellow, something like that. But regardless, we got our guys back, and we're going to try to get in the end zone right here. Oh my goodness! I can't believe I didn't come down with that. I'm gonna be honest with you. That guy had that last knockout, but I'm fine with taking three here. Reason because I need the points. And honestly, this guy has not shown me anything that's made me too worried. I gave him, there's only two big plays of the game that hitting the corner out both times. And I gave that to him both times. I'm not going to allow that to happen again. And as long as we take care of that, we'll be good. He's not going to have success with this run, guys. I'm telling you guys that right now. He can keep calling this run. I'm going to keep manning people up, and he'll, he might get a yard or two here or there, but he's not going to have great success with it. I know he's coming to H-back wheel here. Okay, two-minute warning. I, if he comes out and again, I know he's going to H-back wheel. I'm ready for it. I'm just going to cross man this guy on his post. This guy's going to hard flat. I'm spying right here, so I'm hard flat over here. He'll take everything away. Uh, the corner rock got over my cloud. That was my fault. He's actually low key dotting me, but I hope he goes back to that again. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure to take away his corner rock if he goes back to that again. I forgot I had the, the corner rock gets over clouds, and it's really really quick too. Corner rock coming. I'm on it this time though. Dude, what am I doing? Oh my gosh, who am I manning up? I think I, I think he's glitching. I think he's doing like the I think he's doing that glitch where like when you man people up, they don't stay man because I know I man that guy. I know I manned up Gronk that time. There's no way I didn't. So now that I've seen it twice, so I've given up that corner route twice for touchdowns. 
The first time I thought the corner route was definitely manned up. That time I definitely didn't man it up because I knew I was going to lurk it. And I'm like 99% sure I manned up Gronk and he wasn't manned up. So if you guys don't know, there's a glitch out there where if you if you wheel your running back, it will make your, if your safeties that are manned up will just kind of like go somewhere else and be manned up elsewhere. And the guy that they streaked who was supposed to be manned up just goes for a touchdown. So it's like, I'm pretty sure that is what just happened um, because there was nowhere to be found and I definitely made up my safeties and there's no way I made them up on the running backs and stuff. So definitely something fishy there. Not fishy in that it's like scummy or anything. It's just like a little glitch in the game that I need to note of and not give them that again. But we'll be okay, guys. This guy really hasn't shown me anything too special, honestly. And I don't, I don't see having too much trouble with getting back into this game so we'll be okay not too worried about it feet down please thank you honestly just drawing up dots right here there's nothing really too in particular that i'm running just trying to just put out anything that would be cover two and cover three i don't need to do anything uh zone specific just because he's not doing anything too special on me uh he's just missing up his coverages which is good but i can just put stuff out there that'll be both and i should be fine should be fine i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to match beat him here but I don't have as much space as I did before, so I have to do a couple of things differently, but should be okay. Got him. Bang, bang, baby. All right. we just As long as we don't let him glitch us, we'll be okay. Should be fine. Take one here. Guys, if you're down two early in the game, it's not the fourth quarter or at least late third, please just take your points. You never know when you're going to want them back. I'll just say that right there. Okay, boys. So now we're in a position, we made it to a one point game. We just gotta make sure we get off the field. He's back in split close. We know he's going to H back wheel and we're gonna try to lock it up. You see, I have the deep quarter and we're on it. Actually, I put two spies, didn't mean to do that. Ooh, let's go, Shanti. Now we were gonna lurk that anyways, but our spy made the play. Is what it is, man, I'll take it. We didn't mean to have two spies, but looks like it worked out for us. We're gonna take that. Now we're in a position with complete control on this game. And we're probably going to be able to put it away out of halftime. Not too worried about it now. Okay, now I need to make sure I finish the half off right. I'm not going to man up my safeties right here. I'll man up here. I'll man up here. And I'll do this. But I'm not going to man up my safeties because I'm not going to allow him to do that glitch on me. Just in case he ends up doing that. I'm not going to risk it at a half. I have ways to stop it from happening. So in the second half, I will go to it to prevent it. But I am not going to risk anything in this moment. If that makes sense to you guys. So... As you can see, he went to his corner route play. Was expecting it the whole time because I know that he was going to do it. Should have picked. But I was not going to risk manning up my safeties and allowing that to happen again. So just noting that. Now, this is third down. I'm going to blitz him here. Just because it's the end of the half. I don't want him to take anything long. And... There we go. We made the ball, get, get the ball out quick. He didn't have his open his underneath stuff open. We took that away, and we forced him to fourth down, which is pretty much putting him in a spot where he can lose the game, and we can get off the field. So this time I'm not gonna blitz. Everything's taken away. He tries to playmaker. We got our guy manned, and it's a box, baby. Y'all know how it go. Y'all know what it do. Come on, man. Basically putting this game away. Looks like he's going to quit out. Hope he doesn't. Please don't quit out. But, all right, man. I know it wasn't the longest video, guys. I know it wasn't the greatest chaos coaching ever. I wanted to do it live. And when it, when you do it live, it, it takes away me making sure it's going to be a good game. So the way I've done chaos coaching in the past is... I've done it with a game where I know it was good. It was versus opponent that I thought was pretty decent. It doesn't always be the greatest opponent, but it's at least a decent opponent. But it's not live, so 
It's not giving you my literal exact thoughts while the game's going on. It, it gives you my post-mortem thoughts, which is not bad, but I can't tell you guys exactly what I'm thinking in the game. Certain things happen in the game, you get rattled a little bit, maybe th something bothers you, something happens, and you're not thinking perfectly clear. Now, when I'm playing, when I'm doing the recording like this, I'm able to tell you guys exactly what I'm thinking, exactly what's in my head the entire time. When I do it afterwards, it kind of gives me a second to reflect and kind of give you guys what my mistakes are. So it's probably a little bit better post with as far as telling you my mistakes, but it's better the way that I did it now to tell you guys exactly what's going on in the moment. So not sure which ways you guys like it better. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys like it better the other way, when it's guaranteed like a perfect game to do it, sure. Let me know in the comment section. I'll start. Do, I'll go back to doing it that way. If you guys like it better like this with a live cam and live reactions, live thoughts. Tell me you like it that way. Let me know in the in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. I'm really curious. I'll do it the way that you guys like it and the way you guys enjoy it more. So, hope you guys enjoy, man. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Hope you guys are having a great week. Take it easy, man. Peace.